Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So I have a slightly messy one today. You can probably see by the state of my desk. I mean, my desk is always messy, but possibly today it's even worse than normal. So what I have got here is some of these um, little, uh, what do you call these, dies um, for your big shot and, you know, your, uh, I don't know what other um, machines they're called, but, you know, there's plenty of them around. I mean, mine just happens to be a big shot, but I've, which I've had for years. And I go in fits and starts of using it, but I have to say I haven't really used it very much of late. Anyway, I finally um, purchased some some new dies. So because a lot of mine were very scrapbooky, they were quite childish images, maybe like cars and things like that. So I thought I could do with, you know, getting into um, what we actually are doing here. So I managed to get some in the sale and I can't actually remember whether it was these three and then these two or it could have been those two and these three. I can't actually remember, um, but I got them from a cheap shop here called The Works. The Works is like a bookshop, but it has an arts and crafts section and they were on sale. So I think these two were four pounds and these might have been seven pounds. Um, or it might have been eight pounds for those. So I thought, right, I'm going to, um, you know, treat myself and kind of get into the uh, more vintage style of my dies and have some, you know, some fun playing around. So I've obviously already cut some out with these and we're going to have a play with what we're going to do. But I just wanted to kind of give you a little tip because I know that you can buy those little tools, um, you know, to get your your pieces out. But those tools, you know, I mean, it all mounts up once you buy all these things. So I just wanted to say that, you know, actually, if you've got one of those pokey tools, I have found that using that works just as well. You really don't have to go to all that expense of buying all the extra bits and bobs. So, yeah, if you've got like a little pokey or even, you know, just a needle probably would do. And then you can just poke your your pieces out. And as as I say that, of course, now it's not working, but... Trust me, I have poked them all out um, so far and, you know, it's really worked fine. But of course, you put the camera on and, you know, it's not then going to work. So, oops. Oh, no, I'm now going to have this one stuck in here just to make me look like I'm lying. Well, I'll come back to that one in a minute, but hopefully, you know, the bigger ones definitely I've had no problem getting out with the pokey tool. So just go somewhere where you can see it beginning to lift and then you should be able to just just lift it oh, well, no. <laughs> honestly this was <laughs> has worked for all of them so far this is just typical you know embarrassing you switch the camera on and it's like oh i'm not going to work now but honestly this has worked every single time oh gosh anyway um, yes, I, I did manage to get them to, to all work by doing that. But if you haven't got, um, you know, a poke tool or like this, it decides not to work, you can also use your, you know, if you use these makeup brushes for blending, I got mine from Amazon. I think they were a pack of five. They're called Fashion Base. I just searched up makeup blending tools. Um, or makeup blending brushes and these came up they weren't very expensive I can't remember how much now but they weren't you know extortionate or anything like that I think all five might have been about seven or eight pounds um, so yeah if you can't get them out you can just go around with your little makeup brush oh and again now this is just going to now not work at all come on and you should be able to kind of just get the bristles into the edge and then it will begin to lift. But of course it's not going to while I'm doing the video. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing, isn't it? Okay. Well, hopefully between your, um, you know, your pokey tool and your, your brush, you will be able to get it to lift. So, oops done with putting my glasses on because now I'm obviously struggling to actually see what I'm doing oh, isn't this embarrassing yeah never watch my videos thinking you're going to follow any of my tips and ideas because honestly <laughs> they might not actually work 
Oh no, this is just so embarrassing. Right, well really I should switch the camera off probably and just come back to this, but I'm kind of determined now. It's like, oh come on, don't let me down. This is just horrible, horrible experience. Oh come on. Honestly, I can't believe this. Ah. I mean, obviously this one is particularly stuck in because it's such a tiny butterfly, so that is kind of making this one worse. I mean, you saw obviously on the slightly bigger one how easily that came out with the the brush, so hopefully you do feel slightly reassured that this does work. <laughs> well, I might just have to come back to this tiny one because, um, yeah, without my glasses on to actually see where I'm poking my pokey tool, I, you know... I'm probably fighting a uh, losing battle. So, right, I'll come back to that one, but I promise you that's worked, like for all the ones that I have been playing with all morning. And again, then you can just clean your, um, you know, your butterflies out with the the brushes. So between, again, the brushes and the pokey tool, you should be able to get most of your little bits out. Okay, so that's my first tip, which you may or may not want to uh, listen to probably probably you will choose to ignore that um and i wouldn't blame you at all right okay so what i have here is my bunch of butterflies that i have um you know <laughs> used my brush and my baker tool on and they have all come out successfully so again if you've got obviously bits left you can just go around with your you know your pokey tool and just pop them out I mean, obviously these butterflies, or not these ones, but, you know, obviously butterflies generally, they, you know, you can get all sorts. So you can get some that don't have all these little sort of bits. I think this one was called a lace, you know, lacy butterfly. So that's why it's got so many sort of holes in it, because it was, you know, meant to be a sort of lacy effect. So let's just pop them all out like that. Okay, hopefully I've got them all. Again, I can't really see particularly brilliantly today, but for some reason. Okay. Oh, gosh, come on. Ah. Okay, right, there we go. So just to demonstrate, you know, that's how easily we've got all our bits out. And, you know, I do apologise if I'm literally, you know, teaching people to um, suck eggs here. I'm really not meaning to be insulting. Um, but, you know, I know that when I first got my big shot, I really thought, oh my gosh, what do I do with this, you know? So what I've done, and I thought we would come along and play with, is, you know, how to change the appearance of your butterflies. So one of these has got a section which has torn. If I can find that one to start with. Might have been this one. I don't think it was this one, but as you can see, I mean, this has kind of half half torn here, whereas you know, where the back sort of section of the paper has come off. So if you've got a situation like this with something like this, I mean, you can always just take this whole outer layer off because can you see it's edged? Hopefully you can see that. If I just kind of point it out, you've got like this edge around your butterfly. So if you've got a scenario where it's come out of your cutter and that's happened, because maybe you've run it through twice and the paper wasn't quite thick enough or something like that. So, I mean, actually, this is that craft card, so it's pretty thick. Um, but if you were using some thinner paper, which I have got one that genuinely did break, then what you could do, depending on the design, you might be able to alter it. Don't just bin it straight away and think, oh, no, it's not worked. Because, for instance, this one, as you can see, this is just like a whole outline. So what I can do, I mean, I can just run that right down to there and just tear that off. And then again, straight up there and just tear it there. So can you see, you wouldn't even know that had an outline before. So I will do the same obviously on the other side. So as it all matches up and, you know, looks the same. Oops, like that. And then like that. Okay, and then again, all my pieces, I would just go back through with my pokey tool and, you know, poke them all out. So I won't bore you by doing that, but just sort of to demonstrate a couple of the things that you can do. So assuming that you have then punched out all of your bits, so for instance, I would take this one. Now, if you wanted to change the colour, for instance, if this was black, 
Now, I personally probably would be inclined to take this outline off anyway because I find it's a little bit delicate. This is thinner paper, obviously. So I'm just going to take that off again because it just makes it easier to work with. All the time I've got that sort of flapping around, it's, it's a little bit tricky. Now that's gone, for me that just feels a lot easier. And one of the things that you could do, for instance, you know, if this was black or... Uh, sorry, if this was on white paper or something and you thought it was pretty dull, I mean, of course, you can distress it with your, you know, distress ink and things like that. But if you wanted to kind of do just a slightly different sort of inking effect, I mean, you could just literally wipe it onto your ink pad, oops, like that. This is my stays on ink. And then you're going to get, you know, a different effect to when you're using your um, distress ink. So, I mean, I personally quite like that. And if I just put it on, I don't know whether it's really that visible on the book page. Let me just bring in a plain piece. Hopefully you can kind of see we've got a patchy effect going on there. And it just gives you a slightly different effect to using the ink, uh, you know, the distress ink. So that's kind of one tip. And obviously that was using black. I've got some other colours here. I have got, oops, she says, let's hope I can find it now. Yeah, because all my inks I do tend to have piled up above my desk so that they are all handy. So here, I've got that gorgeous royal purple. So again, if I just take one which is, you know, hopefully sort of ready to use, let me just, let me just find one. Oh, well, typically I haven't really got one that's ready to use. So if I just take this one, and I won't bother poking the holes out, but I will just work with this one just to kind of give you an idea. So I'll just get rid of this off the desk. Like that. And this is just some coffee dyed card. And obviously, as you can see, I haven't poked the holes, you know, poked the, the lacy parts out. But again, I can just wipe that over to my over my stays on like that like that and it's giving quite a different effect to if you were just going to be using your distress ink so if i just now take my distress ink in fact i've got some some lilac-y colour, which actually I have to say doesn't look particularly lilac. Um, it's called shaded lilac. I never think it does look very lilac, to be perfectly honest, but we'll give it a try. Okay, so then you can just ink around that. Like that. And that would just give you just a bit of a different sort of a, oops, effect to your butterfly to if you just you know distressed it with your distress inks and of course you know you could probably just dab it onto your distress ink you don't have to use the stays on you know just use whatever ink pads that you've got but I think that's quite nice and if I just again bore you to tears by just poking out some of the lacy type parts you know hopefully then you will see oops see a little bit more because at the moment it's obviously looking quite solid sections of colour where once we start poking the oops poking the bits out hopefully not tearing it but it is it is quite fiddly and I'd normally bring this a bit closer to my face to be fair but obviously I don't really want to be getting my my head in the film so I'm trying to do this from a bit of a distance and um you know, I can't necessarily see it as clearly as I would if I'd had it a bit closer to my face. So, um, oh gosh, I can't see it all there. Might be easier to go in from the back. Oh gosh, I can't, I can't see it all. Right, I can't see it all. So um, I might have to just leave this one to do this again off, off film later when I can actually bring it closer to my face. But 
again, if I just bring in the plain paper, can you see? I mean, it just gives a different sort of effect, really, to if you just distress inked it all over. So I think that's quite a nice way to do it. And of course, you could spritz it with water if you were using your distress inks and things like that. Um, but I quite like that deep sort of colour with the stays on. So I think they're really, you know, really nice. So that's that one. And obviously, that's the, the black one. So I'll move those out of the way. And then the other thing that I did was I have made this one. Now this one I used my full sheet label sheet. So what I did, I ran it through the printer and just printed some um, of my Dawn Mist papers. And then I also did another, another bunch using my Elegant um, Beauty and Peach. So the whole sheet was then just covered with those. And if I show you these, which are some more that I've done, and then all I've done, because they're obviously labelled, so they're already sticky. Because, of course, you know, these are quite fiddly if you were going to glue these, you know, yourself. They're very intricate to glue. I mean, maybe something like Mod Podge would be quite good. But, I mean, if you were actually gluing this, it would be pretty fiddly to glue. So I just thought using the... Using the label paper, which, of course, again... <laughs> Now I can't be a lit off. Oh gosh, this is going to be just one of those videos. I'm so sorry. Right, well when you get this actually started to be able to peel the backing off of the sticker. Because effectively that's what this is now. It's just a sticker. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my gosh, I might have to actually turn the camera off so that I can get this really close and um, peel the backing off of it. Oh, come on. Right, so have I got lift off here? Is that beginning to separate from the backing? I don't think it is. It felt like it was. Oh, here we go. Hurrah, right. Thank goodness, I thought that was even more disaster. Right, so obviously you can just peel the whole backing off and you don't have to worry then about all those intricate pieces. And then if I take just get a clean, clean piece of book page, you can just pop it onto your book page like that. And it's obviously a sticker. And then what I did was I took my stains by Patricia Viramonte. So Patty Pockets is her stains. And what I did, I just dipped my finger in this. <laughs> Not sure that's great and actually I've now done this the wrong way around as well so oh what a video when I did this earlier I obviously cut it out first and now I'm obviously stuck because I will have to wait for this to dry I mean thankfully it doesn't take too long to dry but yeah in an ideal world you would obviously have cut this out first but never mind it's, it's um <laughs> it's not been a good day so far okay so I just went over it like that and this stains it's also a bit like a glue so anywhere where your your label sticker didn't actually stick, which I mean, hopefully, it, you know, it would stick anyway. But I mean, if it didn't, you've reinforced it because that um, stains is a little bit like Mod Podge. So you've kind of reinforced sticking it onto the page. So I'm just going to put that out the way while we wait for that one to dry. And I'll just take another one. Oh, I've got a blue one. We don't want to do them all the same colour, do we? That's a bit boring. Okay, so I've got this blue one here. And I can just, again, peel off. Oh, I've not now popped the holes out. Oh, my God. Right, I wanted to spare you the um, ridiculousness of me punching out those po uh, holes, you know, the pieces of the lace. So I've got all of those off now. And um, obviously, I can just peel the backing now off from here as I kind of had started. And what I've done, I've brought along some of that sewing pattern paper, just a little tiny piece. So I just spread that out. And what I thought we could do is just pop the butterfly onto there. Oops, this one's got a bit damaged. But again, you know, I mean, if it looks too awful when I stick this down, I will just, um, you know, remove that outline edging anyway, and I won't have that at all. 
So there it is on that um, sewing pattern paper, which is lovely because obviously it's all sort of transparent and lovely. And then, this time I will cut this one out first. So I just cut, cut that out. Now, again, I mean, what I'm going to do is just really be naughty and just cut those, those off because um, they were going to be pretty fiddly. I did leave them on with the book page, if you can see. But to be honest, with this sewing pattern paper, I just thought they're going to be pretty delicate, so I'm just going to get rid of them. And then we just cut around that butterfly. You know, and you don't have to go smack bang next to the edge. You can go out a little bit. You don't have to worry too much. And then just cut those little dangly bits off, or not off. Well, hopefully not cut them off, who knows. I, I may decide to cut them off if they prove to be a bit fiddly and wobbly now. Or if when I come to do the other side, I forget and cut that one off by mistake, then I'll come back and cut that one off. But right, let's just cut around here. Oh my gosh, come. Okay, and this sewing pattern paper, I mean, it, it almost kind of just tears against the edge of the scissors. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to cut, um, you know, from a, Sort of shaping point of view the only thing is it does you know tear very easily so you've got to be a little bit careful okay right so there's my butterfly oops there we go there's my butterfly on the um sewing pattern paper and so what i'm going to do again if i just take again another sheet of paper i'm just going to go over that again with that patty pockets and you know like I say I mean I have just been dipping my finger in this when I've used it recently because that just works perfectly you know it's not really messy or anything like that it dries pretty quickly and it you know it washes off when I wash my hands so that's all I've been doing and it's working out brilliant and very handy for tiny pieces like this and that's obviously for sale in Patricia's shop. So I'm, not, I'm sure that we all know Patricia Viramontes, but I will try and remember to link her below for anyone who hasn't come across Patricia. Now I'm just going to lift that slightly from that book page, hoping it's not got stuck already. Okay. There we go. And then I'm just going to leave that to dry on my desk for five minutes. So I'll just pop that there. Okay, let's put that in the bin. Now I'll just come back to this one and see if this is dry. It's getting there, it's, it is nearly dry, but I'll just give it a few more minutes. So whilst we're waiting for that to dry, I'll show you, oops, a couple of the other ones that I did. So what I did earlier, before switching the camera on, was when I did this one on the book page, and again, I just did it with the you know, the patty pocket stains um, as well. And what I did, I just cut it, when I cut the butterfly out, when it was on the book page, I just kept three book pages together and obviously cut all three book pages out. So now what I have is a little layered up butterfly. So if I just take my, my glue, and also, sorry, I forgot to say, what I also did was then um, stained, you know, with the, the stains, the, these butterflies, which obviously these are not the lacy ones. These are the ones that I've just cut out. But they are now stained as well. So they're a little bit more um, textury than just book page, if you see what I mean. And of course, they've got that lovely colour from the, the stains. And then I'll take my top one. Like that. Okay. OK, 
okay so they are now stuck together in a little layered butterfly form and then of course you can then ink them up like that and obviously you know depending on what whoops what color you've printed your sheet of labels you know you could just do a great big black box and print that on your sheet of label because then you would have you know you could even just use a sharpie in black and color in a square on your label sheet um you know or on if you've got those individual labels you could do it like that and then you'd have a black edging for your butterfly which actually would be you know it would stand out much more than obviously this is probably standing out um you know on the camera at the moment now i just happen to have a little rosebud here i thought might look quite sweet in that center of that butterfly i have to be honest i'm not sure it looks quite right on that one i'm not sure this is quite the right color or <laughs> again just butcher in the butcher in the butterfly I can't help but think it looks better without the um, thingamajigglies. So I can never remember what they're called. I know I call them antennas. I know they're not antennas, but yeah, I can't ever remember the phrase. So we can just put that little rosebud, and I'm just going to hot glue that because that's just really quick, like that, in the center of the butterflies. And how cute does that look? Sorry, I just I just had um, hot glue threads then that just then pulled the butterfly clean out my hand. But how cute does that look? So if I just again bring in bring in my page just to show you, isn't that gorgeous? It looks so pretty, doesn't it? And I mean, as I say, you know, if you used say black or something dark to print your label, that's going to be much more um, impactful, I suppose would be the word. Uh, for instance, you know, this, if I had layered this one on those book pages, do you see what I mean? It would look then, well, let's do that quickly. So, I mean, this obviously, this was scrapbook, sorry, just dragging things around. This was scrapbook paper. This was not label sheet. But what I'm going to do, oops is I'm going to attempt to stick this down. Now, as I say, because this is very fiddly, it's got all those, you know, billions of, um, well, billions is an exaggeration, but you know, lots and lots of pieces that have all come out. Gluing is not going to be ideal for this, you know, unless you're quite patient. Sadly, I am not a very patient person. So again, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use that patty patty pocket stains because like I say that is a, a glue of sorts so all right have I got all the bits out now I think I have I think I have so let me get rid of those I'm just going to take three of those ready for when I cut that one out And then what I'm going to do, so again, obviously I'm going to have to wait for this one to dry, but just going to go over this like that. Oops. And then glue that down to the book page. So you see, for me, that's just absolutely so much easier than obviously it would be using glue. So, you know, it just, yeah cuts out a whole bunch of time really okay I maybe overdid the the colouring of the stains I put it on quite thick which also is a mistake because now it's going to take forever to dry but never mind so again I'm just going to put that to one side to dry let's check this one out okay so this one is not a hundred percent dry but it's pretty dry it's it's doing pretty well so I'm just going to cut this butterfly out and again, I'm just going to chop those thingamajiggies off. You know, that just makes it so much easier, to be honest, because that's, of course, the bit that's fiddly to cut out. You know, if you just cut them off, then it's just a whole bunch easier to um, cut it out. And to be honest, I still think it looks like a butterfly. It doesn't 
you know, it doesn't no longer resemble what it's supposed to be or anything like that. It just makes it easier to work with, really. So, again, let me just catch that tail thing. Again, I don't know whether that's called a tail. I, I actually don't know what that would, called, would be called, but um, yeah. Again, just showing my ignorance, really, of, um, of things. Okay. Okie dokie. There we go. Now, obviously, I did not cut... Uh, I didn't do the stains on these ones because I've only just cut them out. And because, obviously, I'm doing a video, I don't want to be sat here you know, for hours making you wait. But what I'm saying is you could at this point then stains these two or, you know, or Mod Podge. I'm not, I'm not saying you have to have this. I'm no way saying that. I just was really lucky because Patricia actually, um, did I just say I wasn't going to do this? I'm so sorry. Uh, it's been one of those days so far today. So I think I'm in a bit of a fluster. So I do apologize. And it's obviously now coming through on my video. So, uh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Right, I'm just going to pop that to one side to dry. Yes, if you haven't got this, what you could do is you could Mod Podge your butterflies to give them a sort of sealed coat. Um, you know, that's what I've done before with the layer butterflies that we did in the Mass Make. I just used Mod Podge. And then, of course, you could then ink that. Um, you know, and that will be fine as well I mean of course you don't even have to coat them with anything you could just use them as book pages I'm only coating them because I think it gives them quite a nice sort of finish you know it makes the texture a little bit different um so that's the only reason that I'm I'm doing that so yeah now I have to wait for those to dry what a what a wally right so I've just pulled in back now that little sewing pattern paper butterfly that we did Oops, it's very delicate um, because, of course, it is just that sewing pattern paper, but isn't that lovely? And then, of course, you know, you could use that on your project. I mean, it is delicate. Of course, it's delicate because it is that sewing pattern paper and it's also still wet. Um, so, I, you know, I shouldn't really still be touching it because every time I touch it, it just sticks on me. But, yeah, I mean, that's obviously another um, option. And had it been dry, it would have obviously been a lot better to be showing you but again if I just take if I just take some of my bling my my favorite the black bling which I love okay now how many do I want four I think I think four okay we would put the four there. Oops. I'm just flicking that about. There we go. I mean, obviously, I'm not sticking that on at the moment because um, it's so flimsy. I don't want to stick something heavy on that might then cause it to sort of break in half before I stick it on a page. But, I mean, obviously, that's how that would look. And it's super pretty, isn't it? And, of course, it's, you know, it's see-through. Well, you know, not completely see-through, but it's transparent anyway. And... Um, you know, really, really, really nice or translucent. Um, really, really nice. So let's just see how these are coming along. No, they are not dry, I'm afraid. So uh, yes, definitely I should not have done that. Let's see how this one's getting on. Again, this is still pretty wet. So um, yeah, I shouldn't really have done that. I wonder if I can just dry it with my heat gun. So hold on a minute. That worked wonderfully. So now I have a dry butterfly. Let's just trim that round. And again, I'm just going to kind of, um, you know, be really cruel and cut those things off. I mean, it really does just really help with the cutting. So, um, you know, I really, I really do tend to mainly cut them off, to be honest. And I, of course, I'm not saying that that's what everybody has to do. Because actually, I think most people don't cut them off. So, um, I mean, I just find if I do cut them in, not only does that take ages, 
They're then so incredibly flimsy and delicate that invariably they're going to snap off anyway at some point. So to be honest, I might as well just, you know, save myself a bunch of time and just cut them off in the first place because then then that's no, you know, no problem anyway. Right, so there's that one. Again, let me just get rid of those. So again, obviously I haven't stained, stained those. I'm not going to this time and I am going to be true to my word and not do that. But of course I can now just ink these up so they're, you know, not sort of stark bright book pages. So we just ink those. And then I'll just ink this one like that. So again, let me just stick these together whilst I'm sort of at it. And actually, I probably should have stuck these the other way. So layering up, you know, this bottom from from the bottom to the top. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So we just pop that one down like that. Oops. Okay. Bend that up a little bit like that okay I mean I just think these are quite nice because um, as they're sort of naked self as the lacy butterflies I think they're lovely um, I mean here is one that I just left completely lacy and I just did the stains on that so but it again this is on card it's not really on paper on paper I found them pretty delicate um, but this I just think gives them a little bit of an extra look to them a bit more dimension and um yeah just a bit more interest really so just take that one and again I'm just going to take a bit of bling just to give you an idea so i mean you can see there that obviously you know the darker colors are going to show up a bit more of an impact than this kind of light light color that we've got here for instance or you know this one that we did here but yeah um I mean they're just good fun to play around with you know um I mean I really like how this one's turned out I must say and again I mean you could kind of layer that up then these are obviously the same shape butterfly with the book pages so you could layer those up and they're really really pretty so that's the sewing pattern paper with the label sticker and then it's the book page underneath. So yeah, just um, play around really and uh, you know, to see which ones you like best. But I just thought they were quite fun and you know, thought that I would come along and just share a little bit of fun with you guys, um, you know, because I was obviously playing around and seeing, seeing what things that I could come up with because you know, in their naked form, I just, I didn't know sort of how pleased I was with them. So um, yeah. I hope that you like them and yeah I wasn't meaning to teach anybody to suck eggs because I realised that a lot of you guys you know already have had these <laughs> types of things for years um, but yeah thank you very much for watching and I hope you all have a fab day hope you all join me soon and thanks very much then bye